Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management and we are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're interested in passive investing, then click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And most importantly, sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, feel like Joan Jett. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Wendy donates 30 <laughs> minutes per person on Wednesday afternoons. Uh, there's a link over here in the chat, which reminds me, we have a chat <laughs> over on the right hand side or underneath uh, the screen, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from. She's usually booked up about two months in advance. So yeah. get on the calendar. And what's really cool is our guest today is the person I stole this from. I'm sorry. This idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got it from him. So I'm pretty excited about that. I, you know, we're trying to change our backdrop a little bit. And um, Jonathan, it's like your face is just up there because your hair just blends right into and the curtain. The vest and everything yeah. that goes in the curtain. It's almost yeah. like you're an, uh, 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 an opposite invisible man. Well, an opposite invisible man. Yeah. Does that mean we have to change the color scheme of the <laughs> curtain? Now? I'll wear a different color next week. Yeah. <laughs> We're probably going to get head, new blinds you? too. I don't like those <laughs> blinds either. We'll fix it all up. But at least you can see the brick wall, which you couldn't really tell. Before. That's right. Okay. Let's get into the good stuff. All right. Yeah. A little breaking news. Sharub, if you will. <laughs> Enough. You guys can't see this in the background, but, uh, Sharub the Wonder Woman back in the little controls in the background. Every time you say your name, she puts her hand over her mouth. Like, don't, don't say my name on camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so California, the Re people's Republic of. <laughs> you don't well, watch that. Has, now you might offend somebody. And here it is. Uh, tax on flipped. If they're trying to push through um, the California uh, Realtors Association reported that 51% of all purchases were done by investors in 2021 and it scared the crap out of them. And they're accusing them of bringing all the values sky high because they're fixing them up and then they're flipping them for a higher value and they're causing people not to be able to participate in the market because they're too unaffordable. I would say, a lot of it has to do with the taxes that make it unaffordable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's beside the point. Uh, so they're trying to pass a bill that will put a 25% uh, state capital gains tax on anything that is turned over within a th three year period. Which is crazy because now they're really going to decrease the value of the homes available because they won't be fixed up. People are going to be buying homes that are subpar. And, well, that's and not ju just not that. What if somebody gets a job transfer? They're going to not be able to sell their house. They're going to have to rent it out and, uh, if they don't want to pay that. Yeah, tax I didn't even think of that. Years. I didn't mm -hmm. even think of that. So it's, okay. it's stupid, but, but build to rent's going to be huge there then. Right. Build to rent, <laughs> yes, it sure will. Um, that said, uh, call your local. Congressperson, if you're in <laughs> California. Yeah. yeah. I doubt anyone wants to pay 25%. Yeah. That's just crazy. Tax. It's scary actually, mm -hmm. for sure. So we are very fortunate to have a, a good friend of ours on the show. He is a, a part of uh, a spec building business, a uh, property management company, uh, as well as owning a whole bunch of his own rental properties. Oh, yeah. He's into a lot. He's, um, he's been doing a lot. And, I think I've told this story before. I won't, I won't get into it, but how, how we met originally is pretty funny. Uh, you guys can message me and I'll, I'll give you the I'll tell the story. All right. Really, really quick. He was flipping the house next to my house. And when a, a guy that was working on the bathroom tile, 
before they turned the water on, came and asked me if he could borrow some water. And I said, yeah, no problem. He had a little five gallon bucket in his hand. I said, and you don't have to come over here and ask me again, just use what you need. And oh, no big deal. And then one day I came home from work and there was a water truck backed up in my yard using my <laughs> water hose. <laughs> Because the, well, he's just doing the, what you the said. tile guy said, yeah, you can get all the water you want over there. He said, there's no problem. <laughs> so, we, so we had to meet. That was great. <laughs> I think that's great. Anyway, Jeff Johnson, thank you so much for joining us today. What an introduction. Wow. <laughs> It was kind of funny. Yeah, it was. That, it, I, I do whatever I can to save money. So that's, that's a good place to start. Thanks for the thanks for the donation of my project, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did appreciate having new neighbors. Uh, oh, I'm sure. And rather than the termites you had next door, right? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I was having to cut the grass over there every other week. Yeah. My yard was big enough. Yeah. I have to cut that one too. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, that was a good deal. So, um, first thing on my mind, Jeff, is how's it going with the spec building? I know, I know these houses are probably sold before you complete them right now, but uh, what about the you know labor and uh, uh, material costs and all and the inventory for lots and all that kind of stuff? You are, are you having issues with that right now? Or yes, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> yeah, well, 90% of our business is just solving those problems you talked, you just talked about. I mean, you know, the days of, of doing this the easy way are over. So finding, finding deals, uh, getting houses built on time on budget is a real challenge. It just really is right now. I mean, supply chain issues. I know we've heard about it in the news, but you know, I was just quoted 22 weeks for windows. Good wow. Grief. Are you kidding that's, me? That's longer than it used to take us to build a house from permit to CO 22 weeks. Wow. Oh my goodness. And, you know, so we've had to, we've had to uh, do some things to try and alleviate those issues, which, you know, one of the things we've done is all of our houses pretty much have the same size windows and we just said whenever, you know, whenever they come off the line, send them to the warehouse. Right. So, yeah. We have a backlog of windows and and it's just those types of things and then they'll you know run out of vinyl siding or lumber lumber will be crazy expensive and trusses are nine weeks i'm used to order trusses and by the time i had the foundation done we had trusses being delivered now if you're not ordering it before you even start designing the house forget it you're you know you got delays it's just a lot of things you got to think about building spec now uh that you didn't have to think about a couple of years ago. So and it's just getting worse. So, so the delays uh, obviously are getting worse. What is that also doing to the cost that you're seeing come through? Well, besides the, besides just the material costs. So you saw lumber took a dip in September of last year. Um, and we took full advantage of that dip as much as we could, but you know, it's back up to record, almost record highs again. And, you know, it used to cost us anywhere from, 12 to 15,000 for the lumber package for one of these small houses. Now it's 30, 45 grand. Wow. So what, you know, what am I going to do? I can't just absorb that. Right. You know, when you're making 15 or 20% profit on a house, you can't just absorb a hundred or 200% increase on, you know, one material. Um, you have to pass that on to the consumer. Luckily in Charlotte, the demand is so high that, prices have continued to rise and the price point that we're playing in the prices just, you know, continue to rise. We get multiple offers on these properties. So as long as that keeps up, we'll be fine. It's, you know, it's, it's if the, it's if the record player stops and the interest rates go up a lot and that that's what we're really concerned about more than anything, but we just keep our eyes on the market and watch what's going on and, and uh, move accordingly. So I had a, a, uh guy called me yesterday. I've gotten more and more calls like this here recently. People wanting to buy houses that need to be moved and then finding a lot to put them on. So, you know, people are doing kind of out of the box things, you know, that they wouldn't normally do to at least, you know, get a deal or two in. Yeah. Um, 
I had a guy, another guy call me yesterday and say he found a, a builder who quoted him a flat fee to build a house and that the size of the house was 2,200 square feet. Actually, it was 2,500 square feet and that he was told that the flat fee would be 220. And I said, uh, <laughs> take it. <laughs> Yeah, I do said, it. That doesn't even that doesn't even sound a little bit right to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that something funky is going on there. Uh, either he's stealing building materials off to, off of our job sites, or something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's guess, where all that lumber went. Yeah, and that's a good point. Talk a little bit about that. Your product disappearing. Oh yeah, I I had a uh, actually I had a rental I was building up in uh, China Grove. And um, they delivered the lumber package on Friday and the framing crew showed up on Monday to frame it and everything was gone. Oh my goodness. Somebody came and stole the entire lumber package for the entire house. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, they brought that on a flatbed. So it had to be either a large truck or multiple trips and none of the neighbors saw anything. And I just, it was just curious. Yeah. How that all happened. All the yeah. neighbors have new decks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we, wow. we even started putting up cameras on our job sites just because mainly because of materials disappearing and then yeah. you know, God forbid. So what we don't do is we stop doing any deliveries on Friday. So materials don't get delivered on Friday anymore. They either show up Monday through Wednesday because we want to either get them secured or get them installed um, before the weekend, because it's really, that's when most of the, the thefts happen. And then we've had lots of break-ins, people breaking in. We had just two days ago, Somebody shot one of our houses that we're building in Rock Hill with a BB gun and broke out all the windows and put holes in all the siding. And it just, you know, <clears throat> yeah, we have insurance or, or, or whatever, but it, you know, then we got to stop and back up and get, and it's just really, it's well, you really, got to get new, new materials for that. Yep. Yep. It's, you know, it's really frustrating. Yeah. But so have you thought about uh, on the lumber uh, price. Have, have you been thinking about other materials, maybe like uh, steel, for example, for your uh, studs and stuff? No, I, I know a couple of guys that did um, some houses in steel. The problem with steel is it's just not nearly as flexible to work with. You really right. have to know how to frame with steel. So you end up having to hire a commercial framer and the costs for the labor are a lot more um, the only thing that I guess that it saves you is you don't have to worry about termites. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't it does have gotten to that point yet. Yeah. <laughs> I did see, uh, I did see a, a article, I think it was yesterday. Somebody in, in Virginia got a house donated to them through, uh, Habitat that was, uh, 3d printed. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've, I've looked into that just kind of out of curiosity more than anything. And it, it's one of those things that's kind of like, um, it's kind of like buying an electric car. It's, it's a great idea, but there's just so many drawbacks, you know, you get this, you get this house printed with concrete and then you got to go in and finish all these weird curved on, you know, spaces with regular drywall, make it look like a regular house. And by the time you do that, it's way more expensive. Than, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but it gets put up a lot quicker. That's for sure. Um, I guess. I guess that's true if you want to save time. And I think as <clears throat> technology gets a little better, it will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see know. that happening. I actually, one of the things I think is going to happen in the near future is modular prices are going to come down. They're going to figure out how to have robots build modular homes. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've done some, we've done some uh, mobile homes on land where we bought a mobile home and put it on land. And that was a little bit painful, but I could definitely see a uh, company uh, building a product that is almost 95% put together in the factory. And it's just, you're just slapping it together on site. You know, it, that, re that relieves a lot of labor costs that you have and, and those types. I really think that's going to be next gen on new construction. Well, they're never exposed to the elements while they're being built yep. like you would a stick built. And, you know, they're going to have to meet code beyond uh, just what your state does, because it has to meet code across the country, depending on where they're shipping to. Yep. Um, so there's there's a lot of positives for that. We mm -hmm. actually, Jeff, we're talking about that in our hot seat of our 
King City Mastermind the other day. Um, you know, someone was looking, you know, has a lot of lots, but is taking their time building houses. And that was one of the suggestions was to go modular. But I would imagine modular. What? I'm just thinking it's a lot harder to steal a quarter of the house if you have it delivered. Yeah, on that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of pros to doing modular. Yeah. I think the only issue we have is, you know, a lot of a lot of realtors hear modular and they think mobile home. But right. You know, we got to get away. We got to get away from that stigma. Right. But appraisal wise, you know, they come in strong, just like stick, stick built does. Yeah. And they're usually built better than stick built houses. Yeah. Obviously. They're straighter and, and, and heavier construction because they got to be transported. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's, I think that's really the next, the next generation. And then maybe, you know, having full houses delivered if, if they get to a certain size, you know, anything under a thousand square feet, maybe you can just have the whole house delivered. Yeah. And set on a pad. Yeah. Yeah. By drone. <laughs> yeah, by drone. I was thinking that. I was like, man, just, like, just drop it right You just in. call Amazon. Hey, can you bring a house over here? Right. <laughs> They're probably looking into it. Yeah. But, you know, going, going back to the issues that we were talking about, I and mean, the biggest issue that we have in, at least in the South, um, is the number of entitled lots that we have. I mean, there's just not enough entitled land and the development process is so long and so expensive developing, you know, let's say a 10 or 20 acre parcel of land. You're, you're 18 months, two years from purchase to by the time you break ground on your, on your first house, you've got a really long, uh, time frame to do that. And um, it, they just make it really difficult. There are some areas in, in North Carolina that are easier than others. They're, they welcome that type of development, but you know, just, just the number of entitled lots is crazy. Cause it's funny. I was out you know, we were out in Salt Lake city a few weeks ago for the power room mastermind. And that's where I'm from originally. And when they built that entire city, they built it block by block and they, basically entitled all of the land as building lots. So they just have an enormous amount of, of entitled land out there. We didn't do that here. I mean, you know, you can be driving on a road in North Carolina. It might have four or five names as you right, right. go from, you know, County to city to County and there's, you know, big farms and there's, you know, little lots here and small developments. And, and it just really mm -hmm. makes for a complicated process for, um, for building new developments, not to mention one of the things we're running up against now, as we start doing some smaller developments is uh, water and sewer capacity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Kannapolis, for instance, we were going to start building some more houses up in Kannapolis and then they put a moratorium on building because they didn't have the sewer capacity. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I, I know that happens through throughout Charlotte too, in certain areas. Yeah, because the infrastructure was built in the, you know, 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to figure out that this stuff is not just, it, it can't handle the, you know, the extra uh, capacity that they need to, to build these developments out. So, um, you know, either the developers got to go spend the money to upgrade the utilities or they end up not being able to do the development. So you have a pretty big wholesaling company as well. Um, yeah, and that's like our you, that's like our redheaded cousin we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but but I've I've heard you say that 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 business has also helped you acquire a number of lots as well. Um, yeah, by yeah, that. yeah, yeah. We, well, we built this huge marketing machine for our wholesale business, and you know I I think if if my memory serves me right, we spend sixty to eighty thousand dollars a month in marketing. Ouch. Um, and so when we started doing spec building, all we had to do was go and turn on the land switch, you know, and, and next thing you know, we've already got the team that's taking the calls and doing the cold calling, doing all that. So that it was really easy to do that. So that, that helped a lot. Absolutely. Awesome. So, so what is your, what's your thought? What's your advice to people that are wanting to build houses? Most people aren't building the number of homes that you are um in a in a in a year but you know there's a lot of people out there doing one or two or you know even five or less let's put it that way what what's your advice i mean 
what kind of direction would you give them with all the things that are going on around you right now? Well, don't do it. Just sell me your lots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You heard um, it here, folks. Give them to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, first of all, um, don't try and do it yourself. If you, you know, even, even people who are just getting their GC licenses or whatever, you've got to right now, you've really got to have established relationships with uh, material suppliers and subs to get a job done at a reasonable cost. So find a good builder, hire a good builder. They'll probably cost you as much as it would to build it yourself. And then they'll take all of the headache off of, you know, your plate. So that's, that's one piece of advice. Um, secondly, and the thing I see uh, happens a lot with people is they start looking at land and they don't know what they're looking at. They, they, mm -hmm. they don't know what the pitfalls are. They don't, you know, they might buy a piece of land and then they call the city and say, Hey, I want to, you know, I want to buy my taps. I want to buy my water and sewer taps. And they go, Oh, well, we don't have capacity on that street or we don't have sewer on that street. You really got to know, you really got to have a good due diligence checklist when you buy land, because most of the people that are, most of the wholesalers that are selling land and people, they're not giving you that information. You have to go and do all your own research. So there's right. a, there's a lot of risk um, buying land that is basically unbuildable. Okay. So hold on a second. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Somebody could buy a piece of lot, have called the, the zoning department, make sure the zoning's all cool and everything. Yep. Close on the land. And then when they go to get the taps, they can't do anything about it. Yep. Wow. yep. Or they, they got to put a septic system in. And uh, you see this a lot in uh, Gaston County where there's uh, areas that have no sewer um, and they have these little lots and the little lots just aren't big enough. They were big enough when those lots were deeded because you didn't have to have a replacement septic area. Right now, the, um, the way that the rules are written is you have to have a lot that's big enough to not only build a septic system, but also build a second septic uh, field. So, you know, a little, a little 10th of an acre or 15th of an acre lot is just not, you, you can't build on it anymore. Mm -hmm. So this wow. is all those things that you have to know. Uh, otherwise you can get yourself in trouble. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Bill and I just bought uh, a big parcel from you. I th think you probably didn't even know, did you? Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, we can't get taps, by the way. <laughs> no, Sorry, Bill. That's why we didn't want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, up, up near on um, the other side of Statesville and Stony Point. So we, we've got a couple mobile homes that we also bought from you last year that we're putting your, your on memory there. said that was a pain. So yeah. He's shifting the pain to other places now. Yeah, no, that's cool. What, see, what I love about what, what, our, what we're doing in our business is even if it's something that's outside of our buy box, if we can figure out a way to create value for somebody else, we'll, we'll take it down. Yeah. Um, you know, we were buying those wholesale uh, mobile homes and we had, I don't know, three or four of them sitting a lot. And we just decided you were not going to do that anymore. And the next thing you know, you guys are picking them up and you probably got them for a lot cheaper than if you bought it off the. Oh off yeah. The no lot. doubt. No doubt. And we made a little money. You saved a little money. It's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how it ends. <laughs> we get we get to get, getting back to the entitled land. Um, I was at CG uh, last week, and there was a couple of people speaking on uh, flipping uh, entitled land. So they would get they would put an option on it, uh, essentially small deposit, and say, "I will purchase this lot or a group of lots as long as they're entitled," and the owner goes ahead and gets it in, entitled, uh, they'll pay the expenses for it, uh, uh, the person buying the lot, and then they will already have a buyer and have it flipped within three days of them actually getting it entitled and then just turn around and flipping it. And they're making a whole bunch of money off of this because you're, exactly what you're talking about. It takes you, yeah. you know, a year to uh, almost a year and a half to 18 months to, to get all that taken care of. And they're much, people are much more willing to spend the money uh, that's going to cost them extra to know that they can build right away. Talk a little bit about what entitled means. I, I'm sure there are people on here that don't completely understand. 
Okay, well, entitled land basically means that it's a lot that's ready to build a house on. So you have a lot of land, especially in North Carolina, that's zoned agricultural. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's it's basically not entitled for a single family home development. It, you might be allowed to build maybe one house per five acres or 10 acres, something like that. You know, a typical farm homestead, but you're not going to be able to build on third or quarter acre lots. So entitled land means that someone has taken that parcel. They've had it rezoned. They've had either um the utilities designed or installed uh and the house and basically the lots are ready to build on doesn't necessarily mean developed land but right. it means it's it's basically it, it's it's at a point in the zoning process and the design process where you could build uh we, we usually say on. shovel ready you know the, yeah. the infrastructure is not in but it's ready to start that phase Right, right. Basically, it's it's got an approved plat mm -hmm. for single family construction, is is what it is. And you know the the thing about it is is and and I know we're doing some development on a couple of parcels, and the engineers right now, you if you call them up, they'd be like, we're four months out from even looking at your project. They they can't even look at your project for four months. Wow, which wow. is insane. Okay. And so now here's the funny thing. And so you've got to go to, say, a neighborhood meeting to try and get a piece of property rezoned. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you've got to have a preliminary plat or some idea of what you're going to do. You call your engineer to do it for you. And he's like, I can't look at it for four months. I mean, now you've got to add another four months to your due diligence with that landowner just to get a preliminary uh, plan that maybe takes the engineer four to six hours to put together right it's just it's it's insanity it really really is so mm -hmm. I, I don't think that the uh housing is going to get any more affordable mainly because we can't build fast enough for the demand especially in these areas in 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 the sun belt yeah yeah for sure i mean building new homes by the decade you know you know 2000 and to, you know well, i guess really 2005 to to, to now it's like i think 10 percent of the previous uh, uh decades wow. that were built it was something something small it was something like like three million units as opposed to the previous decades were like uh, 20 20 yeah yep. yeah. yeah i saw that i saw that diagram uh this morning i think and uh, i was okay. a little shocked but i know i mean that's the reason why is all the good land's been built out on yeah mm -hmm. You know, now anything that's anywhere near Charlotte either has flooding issues or um, some other sort of weird easements. I mean, you, you, every now and then you can find a piece of land that you can build on or split one off from another existing home and that type of stuff. But, you know, building a big development near Charlotte is just next to impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have all the people that. I've already got mine. I don't want anybody else to get theirs and they're all going to be yep. protesting, getting it rezoned and, and that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm seeing that out in Union County now. Yep. NIMBY. They don't want your kids going to the same schools. They don't want you to, you know, they like that big open field back behind them. That's why they bought their house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, being on the planning board, I get that argument all the time. I, I love looking out across the street at the farm and I would say, well, that's, that's why wonderful. I bought a farm. Go, yeah. yeah, go buy a farm then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I you know? and, and, and that's what I would tell them. Listen, if you want to keep that view, go to Oak go over there and buy it from them. They have <laughs> yeah. just as much right to sell it to a developer as you have to buy it and keep it a farm. That's for sure. Yeah, well, and that's another thing. It's funny you'd say talking about buying land. Um, one of the things that we run up against all the time is we start talking to these sellers, these land sellers, and they want they basically want market value as entitled land for unentitled land. Mm -hmm. You know, they want $50,000 a lot for a piece of property that's not even entitled yet, even though we're the ones that have to take it through rezoning, uh, design, development, all that stuff. They, they want to, you know, they think, hey, this is how much it's worth. I, that's how much that lot sold for over right, there. Right. <laughs> and so it's just, you know, it's those frustrating discussions you have to have with people. But 
it's all in the it's all in the game we play. Yeah, yeah. in the negotiation that, that could be part of it. Look, I'm happy to pay you even more for this land as long as you get it entitled. Yeah, are you going to do the work? Right? Are you yeah. the one that's going to take this through zoning and and planning and, and and all those things? And you know, once they figure out what is involved, they they don't want to do it. That's why I was curious about your flipping land comment. Are they really talking about having the landowner take it well, through? They, they okay. are having the, the seller do it and then they're doing it themselves, but they're not owning the land. Oh yeah. No, that's not, is, that's, that's normal. Yeah, they're doing the work just yeah. in the, in the seller's name. And yeah. yeah. And they, they put a deposit down and it has to be entitled before the contract's any good. So well, they would get their deposit back if the land, if the municipality says, no, we're not doing so it. I guess they're doing but an they, option, but they still uh, bear the cost of, of getting all the engineering and stuff done. Yeah. So they're, they are at risk to some degree, just the money. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of expenses for that. I mean, you think about, you've got to hire a surveyor, soil engineer, you've got to have an environmental scientist go out and see if there's any wetlands. I mean, there's just so mm -hmm. many things that you have to do before you can even really take it to the planning board. You know, you have to do your, your feasibility study before you, before you start laying down where you want to put lots and those types of things. So unless you know what you're doing, it could be a, it could be a real uh, mind bending process to try and run a piece of land through development. Yeah. And that was one of the things I was kind of laughing about. Um, there's a lot of moving parts and you have to yeah. know what you're doing to do this. And they were making it sound like, Oh, anybody can just go in there. Mm. This was stuff that you guys <laughs> should be thinking about doing. I'm like, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> But, Anybody can lose money doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so my thought there, having it entitled before you actually are obligated to purchase it um, is very safe. Uh, if you yeah. look at the builders, the developers that again in 2008 and nine, when everything collapsed and they had all this land ready to go, but now they can't build houses on it. They owned all that land and they were in a lot of debt. This way it keeps them from, have having that responsibility mm -hmm. until it's ready to build on. Yeah. Well, so, and that a lot of that is, so you're talking about, you're talking about different things though. You're talking about entitlement, you know, entitlement development and then building. So entitlement is the process of getting a, a property to the phase where you're ready to break ground and put in utilities sure. and all that thing what where a lot of people got caught in 08 was in the development phase where they had pipes sticking up out of the ground and sidewalks right. in and then the banking uh, industry fell apart mm -hmm. and nobody would give anybody loans to buy a house anymore so they're sitting there with these you know entitled uh ready to go lots that they couldn't put houses on those are the guys that really got hurt with it were the um were the developers Mm -hmm. so there are a lot of developers there's so there's guys that will take a piece of land from unentitled to entitled but a lot of the developers will take a piece of land from purchase through sale to a builder mm -hmm. and that's another business model that a lot of people use and that's a pretty high risk business but what builders don't want is we don't want land on we don't want land on our balance sheets right so if we show a bunch of land on our balance sheets we can't go get bank loans to build houses right because they see all of these liabilities that we have for all this land. Cause we're not, we're not buying it unless we're buying it with our own cash. But if we're, you know, if we're borrowing money to build, buy land, it doesn't look good on our balance sheet. So that's another thing is, you know, the developers keep that land on their balance sheet. And then you basically just, you pay them when you sell the house. Right. But so, that's why it's good for people like you to have um, private investors that invest with you. Right. Uh, that can help you through that time mm -hmm. period and uh, yep. get get her done. Get her done. Speaking of which, Sheru, uh, would you do me a favor and pull Jeff's uh, URL up so people want to get in touch with him about uh, investing with his company? There it is. Choosebetterpath.com. Awesome. That's awesome. Jeff, thank you so much for uh, being on our show. Absolutely. I, you know, I love talking about I it. Out in Salt Lake with you. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Oh, did you get any skiing in? I did, but the snow was terrible. Oh, that, <laughs> well, gee, I feel terrible for you. <laughs> I know. But, 
<laughs> better than a better than a good day at the office, I guess, huh? Yes, for uh, sure. That's for sure. And we'll see you on Sunrisers tomorrow morning too. All right. Uh, hey, the good news is you missed all the trees. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I'm still here in one piece. Right. Still here to talk about it. Um, oh, what the heck happened to my teleprompter? I don't know. It went away. I'm going to have to do this. He's going to have to cuff. make up the. <laughs> okay, folks, if you're interested. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, this is the end of our show. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show Hard Money for Real Estate Investors. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you, what? I'm impressed. I can do Keep it. going. Yeah. <laughs> if you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're an accredited investor and you are interested in passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And don't forget to sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy.